Hi there, this is Nico from QTools and as you can see today I'm in my home office. And uh, since that's going to be necessary for some of you and also for a lot of students for quite some time and at least the coming semester, um, we're going to show you today how you can remotely control our entanglement demonstrator and uh, how you can basically perform all the experiments um, that you can do in the lab also remotely if you have the appropriate motorized version of the entanglement demonstrator and also of the add-ons, of course. And um, for this, um, you're going to need just a VPN connection to the, um, to the lab because there the QCR is in the local network and can be accessed via uh, a VNC viewer, for example, um, just by punching in the local IP address. So therefore, we need a VPN into the lab and then um, also in the lab, we're going to need um, one student, for example, a tutor who can align the QED because that's not possible remotely. And also he has to um, switch on the hardware switch on the QED that switches on the laser. Um, just for laser safety re reasons, you cannot do that um, on your own while the hardware switch is off. Um, also, um, we have I'm connected to the QTools office here right now. And at the office, we have um, a webcam that is just uh, filming the optical part of the QED where you can see the um, the white box where the down converted photons will come out. Uh, one of them will hit this mirror uh, going through this polarizer and is coupled into a single mode fiber over there. And the other one will hit the other mirror, go through the other polarizer and also be coupled into a single mode fiber. The fibers go into the detection unit of the QCR where we can then um, detect coincidence between them. And with those, we can then um, perform an experiment like, for example, the belt inequality, or we could use the single mode fibers um, going to some of the add-ons of the QED and perform another experiment over there. So this camera that we have tuned to look at the optical part of the QED um, needs to be connected to a laptop. And this laptop um, is in our case connected to a video conferencing software just to get the video across to um, the students. And um, also the students going to need a VNC viewer. Um, maybe I can just show you how they can connect. I will close the connection again. And um, if they have the VPN connection into the uh, lab, they can just punch in the IP address of the QCR that can be found in the info tab. I can show you just in a minute. And then they hit enter and then they need the password that you can find in the manual. And uh, they are connected and they can arrange the windows on their desktop such that they can see both the video feed from the optical setup and also the live view of the QCR control panel. And um, in here, I'm first I'm going to show you where you can find the IP address. So just press this info. It's the last button on the right side. And then here under IP address, you can find the local IP address of the QCR device that you have to give to your students such that they can connect. And um, then they can start by switching on the laser. They're going to need a mouse with a scroll wheel, um, which that would be very good because the scroll wheel is used to simulate the small rotating button on the QCR. So, um, and here, when they switch to the count rate tab, they can see a moving graph right now where you can see the coincidence count rate between the two detectors behind the single mode fibers over here. And they can see that right now you have about 10,000 coincidences per second that can be detected and with which you can perform the actual experiment in the end. Um, so for the actual experiments, um, just turn on the movement picture and picture overlay and go back to the count rate tab and you can select the motor that you want to control over here. And also you can just by using the mouse wheel, you can just turn the motor to any angle you want. And you can actually watch that the motor is doing what you're telling him um, by having a look at the video feed. And uh, maybe one uh, small tip in advance. Um, when you press down the mouse wheel, it will set the motor to zero degrees immediately. So you don't have to go to zero degrees. You can just quickly press the mouse button. And I'm also going to show you how a student could now actually perform this experiment, the Bell's inequality, uh, the CHSH type. 
And uh, for this, I have the um, QED worksheet, belt and equality here. And um, as you can see, I'll have to fill out these uh, 16 times two small boxes where I have to put in some count rates. And um, after that, I can just calculate the expectation values for the different measurement settings and calculate the two uh, bell values. This one is the standard CHSH inequality. This one is um, has some switched signs over here, which means that it will detect different states to be entangled. So this one, for example, is now used for the phi plus state that we produce in our setup. And the other one is going to be used for the phi minus state, for example, that we can also produce with our setup. Um, for switching between the two states, um, you'll need uh, the student situated at the lab to just pull out the, the wave plate and turn it the other way around and you'll produce the other entangled state. Um, so that's what it says in uh, part two of this worksheet that you have to do this all over again with, the, with another state. And I'm going to show you how you can, um, how your students can do that. So. Um, let me start with the first setting, which is motor 1 at 0 degrees, motor 2 at 22.5 degrees. I'm always turning in the wrong direction here at first. And then I'm not going to use the, the moving graph over here, but I'm going to use the actual uh, count rate tab. And I'm pressing the single shot button, but for a whole second integration time. So I'll switch the one second integration time and I can use this button to just um, activate the counting once and then I have enough time to just copy the count rate over here onto my sheet. And then I'm going to the next one. Set this to 112.5. Press single shot and copy the count rate. And like this, I will just continue for the for the other 16 settings right now. All right. So with that, we just need to calculate the expectation values and in the end, the S values, and we can see if we actually violate the Bell's inequality or not. So let me open a calculator here. and calculate the S value. So in this case, we have an S value of 2.35, which is clearly above the classical bound of two. Um, so we violate the Bell's inequality and we refute all local realistic theories with this. And um, let me just calculate the S bar, the other S value as well. which is 0 0.03. So no violation in this Bell's inequality, which is of course what we expect, because um, for the other state, we will get no violation for the S, but a violation for the S bar value. And um, if you want to be nice to your students and you don't want to do, make them do all this uh, manual stuff again for the other state, you can also show them how to um, fasten up everything. So um, in this motor tab, you can also deactivate the movement pip, but activate the CHSH picture and picture overlay. And um, for this one, you have uh, all the 16 different um, values for the angle settings already pre-arranged here. So students would just have to press one button and um, with that, they can arrive at a setting and then um, copy the count rate, for example. It's also overlay, so they can do it like this. Go to a setting, press this one, copy the count rate. And um, also, if you want to be even nicer, you can also show them 
um, you activate the picture and picture overlay. You can also show them the um, actual automated mode for the bell inequality, which is here. And um, in this case, you can just press start and the motors will, of course, automatically go to all these 16 different values and uh, measure the bells inequality just on their own. But of course, um, as a student's experiment, this is of course not very much what we want um, because the students <laughs> don't really have to do anything. Just watch the video of the polarizers moving. Um, yeah. So you would like to go with one of the first options. So as you have seen, it is quite easy to remotely control our entanglement demonstrator. And um, of course, um, all the motorized add-ons can also be controlled in the same way. And um, also there's another possibility to remote control the entanglement demonstrator, which is via an HTTP protocol, um, where you have to type in the commands and um, then the motors will turn. But I'm going to show you that in another video. And uh, I hope I'm going to get to do that um, soon. Um, but until then, see you in the next video.